Unresolved Problem segment tonight, more military action by U.S. forces against terrorists. Over the weekend, U.S. Army Delta Force soldiers captured a top-ranking terrorist in Libya. And the Navy SEALs attacked the leader of a Somali-based terrorist group that murdered people in Kenya. Joining us from Washington with the inside story, Peter Brooks, National Security Specialist at the Heritage Foundation. Let's take Somalia first. I understand that raid did not go all that well. That's right. I mean, the SEALs went in over the beach. They came upon, uh, they got into a firefight. It's not clear why they, or what their actual objective was. It probably was a leader of al-Shabaab, maybe somebody who was involved in the Kenya attacks at the Westgate Mall, or maybe the leader of al-Shabaab. But we're not really sure exactly what happened. They probably came upon something they didn't expect. Maybe civilians, maybe they, they got involved with, uh, you know, somebody on the beach that they didn't need to, and then tipped off the uh, soldiers and the militants of Al Shabaab, but it just didn't go out the go off the All way right, we so wanted it to. Unlike uh, Black Hawk Down, this wasn't a helicopter raid; it was a beach raid, a landing. That's what we understand. Uh, you assume under coat of darkness, and they they had a location and they wanted to go in and, and get the guys. But I mean, if I'm the commander and I know where the guys are sleeping, I drop a drone on them, and they're all dead. So that tells me I that they wanted intel from these guys. Absolutely. This is a high-value target. There's probably a lot of things they'd like to know, and they probably were going to do a snatch and grab, take them off to a ship perhaps, and then do some interviewing and interrogation and get the information that may uh, you know, tell us more about al-Shabaab. What it tells me, Bill, is that we actually may be more concerned about al-Shabaab and their, their reach beyond that part of the world, perhaps even into the United States, and the threat level is coming up. All right, and that makes perfect sense, uh, because Somalia is a place very difficult to operate. Uh, particularly, you know, uh, because uh, there's no central government, there's nobody in control. You just have to go in and take your chances. But as far as we know, there are no uh, SEAL casualties. They just That's went right. in, met resistance. Uh, do we, but there were reports initially that they got one or two of them, they killed them. Is that true or false? You know, I, I think they probably mixed it up with some of the militants, perhaps guarding this high-value target. Some of them were killed. I heard as many as as many as four. But obviously, be maybe because of civilian collateral damage, they decided to withdraw and All come right, back. But we again. don't know. We don't have any confirmation of how many terrorists may be dead. We just know some might I, be. Okay, that's exactly right. All right, now Libya, uh, a different situation. They go in uh, and they uh, grab this guy, and then the Libyan leader—I don't even know who that is. Uh, says that the U.S. forces kidnapped him. And this guy is a bad guy, uh, responsible for the embassy bombings in 98. He was, right. living, he was living right out in, uh, like, you know, in public, right? Yeah, that's, that's what we understand. He has a long-time association with al-Qaeda, including Osama bin Laden. He's involved with uh, those embassy bombings in Ten Kenya and Tanzania. He may have been involved with al-Qaeda cells in Libya, obviously of great importance to the United States, besides the indictment bill against him in New York City for those, for those bombings that killed more, than, or, you know, killed more than 200 people, including uh, a dozen or so Americans back in 1998. So somebody we really wanted to talk to and get some information about what's going on in North Africa. And he probably has information about Benghazi. I mean, if he's that high up in a terrorist organization, he had to know what happened there. So he's, they snatch this guy, the SEALs do, and they get out. Uh, right. And now he's on, a, he's on a Navy vessel someplace, and you assume they're having a nice conversation with him, right? <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sure we sent one of our interrogation teams to chat with him, uh, get some information, you know, know if there's any plots out there. Maybe he knows something about Benghazi. I think people are a little bit disappointed that we didn't get the perpetrators of Benghazi while we were in there, but I guess you got to do it one at a time. Well, he might be uh, one of them. I mean, you don't know absolutely. that. I mean, he absolutely. absolutely could be one of them. Now, I That's just right. think this Libyan government has a hell of a nerve, uh, you know, criticizing the United States. When they're, they're letting this guy live, they know who this guy is. And then we go in and, you know, it's a war on terror. What, what don't the Libyan government, uh, why don't they understand that? No, I'm, I'm with you on this, but the fact is, is that if you look at it from the Libyans' perspective, they're worried about what happens afterwards. Will there be additional attacks on the government? Uh, you know, th that they're worried about their own right, situation. So they're playing to their uh, crowd, they're, sure, just absolutely. like Karzai does. Sure, um, sure. You know, they have to say, oh, they're bad America, so that they don't turn right. their guns on them. Okay. They may have been working with us on this, or some of them may have been working yeah. with us. There's rumors that there may have been some Libyans involved in this snatch. We don't know exactly, but, uh, yeah, I understand what they're doing. All right, Mr. Brooks, if you get any hard information, please let us know. No, we uh, thank Absolutely. you very much. Plenty more ahead as the fact moves along this evening. It is the